Hey everybody, I'm Andrew Brogdon and welcome back to the Mobile Ads Garage, where the videos are like my mother's Christmas cookies, chock full of ginger. Today we are all about interstitials, which is a word I'm still not sure how to spell. Fortunately, Gary the Graphics Guy has no such problems. Nice work, Gary. All right, we're going to cover the basics of how interstitial ads fit into apps, and then we'll code up a sample implementation in iOS and Android. Now, most of you are probably familiar with banner ads. They occupy a little spot in a viewer activity and stay visible while the user interacts with the rest of the UI. Interstitials, on the other hand, appear briefly in between user interactions, and they use all of a device's screen space. So instead of this, the user sees something like this. That's an interstitial. The user can spend a second or two considering the ad's message and either tap on the ad to click through or use the close button at the top to return to the app. So that's the basic idea. Now, one other thing I want to talk about before we get to implementation is how requests for interstitials work. Requests for banners are synchronous. That means the usual pattern goes like this. You create an ad view, you call its method to load an ad, and then when the response comes from the server, it's immediately displayed in the ad view. Interstitials are a little different. Because they cover the entire UI, you don't just want to toss them on screen whenever they load. Instead, you request them in advance, and then when the moment's right, that's when you display. So their request flow looks like this. You construct an interstitial ad object, call a method to load an ad, then when you're ready, you check to make sure it's loaded and display. All right, with that in mind, let's get to some code. All right, so here I am in Xcode with my app right there. It's really simple, and I just like to show an interstitial when I hit that button. And here are the steps to do so. First, I need to create a GAD interstitial object, then I'll request an ad for it, wait for the right moment, check to make sure it's loaded, and display. So first, I'm going to add an import statement for the Google Mobile Ads SDK to my view controller code. There we go. Now I'm going to come down here and add a new property for my GAD interstitial. There we go. Oh, forgot to make it a pointer. There we go. Now I need to initialize it, which I'll do in view did load. And this is a long statement, but once I get this typed out, you'll see that the initializer takes an add unit ID. Ad units are created at apps.admob.com, and you'll want a unique one for each spot in your app where you show interstitials. Uh, that way you control, control things like mediation and campaigns independently. So there we go. So now my interstitial's created, so I need to request an end. And the first step is to build a GAD request object, which I can do by calling the static request method in GAD request. And once I've done that, I'm also going to give it uh, the simulator's ID to make sure that I get test ads while I'm testing. It's very important. You should always, always use test ads when you're testing your app. Perfect. All right, now I just need to call my GAD interstitials load request method, pass it the request object I just made, and I'm all set. Cool, so the next step is to wait until the right moment in the flow of the app and then try and display. We're gonna talk a lot more about this step and how to pick that right moment in our next video. Today though, since I'm just using a button press, waiting for the event sort of does that for me. That means it's on to the last steps, uh, and I just need to add code to my did receive tap method to check if the interstitial has loaded, and if so, display it. So you can check to see if your ad has loaded with the is ready method. So I'll use that for my conditional here. And then to display the ad, I just call present from root view controller, which in this case is the current class. So I can use self. Cool. All right, let's make sure everything builds just fine. There we go. And hit the button, and there's my test ad. Perfect. All right, so we created a GAD interstitial, requested an ad, waited for the right time, checked and displayed. Job done. So that's a basic example of how to get an interstitial working in iOS. Now let's take a look at interstitials in Android. As you'll see, it's the same steps in a different language. All right, so here I am in Android Studio. I got my app, it's got a single button, and I'd like to display an interstitial ad when somebody taps on it. And here are the steps to make that happen. First, I'm going to create an interstitial ad object. Then I'll request an ad for it, wait until the right moment, check that it's loaded, and display. All right, so in my activity, I'll just drop in a new private member to hold my interstitial ad object. 
There we go. And then I'll construct it inside my onCreate method here. Note that interstitials require a context in their constructor, uh, but since I'm in activity, I can just use this. Cool. And uh, last thing, I just need to give it an add unit ID. Uh, you can make your own add units at apps.addmob.com, and it's always a good idea to have a unique one for each place in your app where you show an interstitial so that you can configure them independently. All right, so creating the object's done, and now I need to request an add. Just like with banners, to request an add, I'll need an add request object, so I'll make a builder. There we go. And I'm going to enter the emulator as a test device to make sure that I get test ads. Remember, always, always use test ads when testing your stuff. There's the constant. And then I just call the build method to get my ad request. All right, add request in hand, I just need to call the interstitial ads load add method, and that'll kick off the load. Cool. All right, so step three is waiting until the right moment, and we're gonna spend more time on this step and how to pick that right moment in our next video. But for this example, I'm just using a button to keep things simple, so waiting for the eventifier kind of does that for me. So that brings me to the last two steps then, which are checking that the ad is loaded and displaying, and I'll handle those right in my on click handler. To check if an interstitial has loaded, you can call the isLoaded method. So I'll put that in my conditional. And then to display, I just need to call show. All right, let me run this bad boy and see what happens. And it's running. Get a click on here, and there's my test ad, perfect. All right, so here are the steps once again. Uh, I created an interstitial ad object, requested an ad, waited for the right moment, checked, and displayed. Job done. So now we've got a working ad in both iOS and Android. But there's a lot more to interstitials that we haven't had time to cover. Things like how to load a new interstitial after you've finished displaying the previous one, how to pause and resume game loops so you can avoid wasting CPU cycles, and when's the best time to show an ad. We're going to spend some time on those in our next episode, so be on the lookout for it. In the meantime, I've got some links for you. You can check out our guides for interstitials on both OSs, and you can get example code from our GitHub repos or by using Android Studio's import a sample option. You might also like AdMob's no-nonsense guide to app monetization. It's an overview of monetization strategies that includes code and tips from other engineers. As always, if you've got a technical question relating to anything you've just seen, stop by our support forum. And if you've got a question about this video series or a tip on something you'd like us to cover, leave a comment below and Gary and I'll see you next time.